I paced back and forth across the room, the flames of the fireplace distorting my form wildly into moving shadows on the wall opposite. The entire keep was quiet and dark, and that was part of the problem. Percival was supposed to have been back weeks ago, and I had not heard a word from Starwalker in months, and had no clue as to their whereabouts or their situation. As I turned for another lap across the room, I felt it. The presence of another, one who was doing a remarkably good job of concealing themselves in their entrance, but not quite good enough to get past me. I turned and fully focused my attention at the presence and saw only a large, shadowy, billowing form with flaming eyes of violet, the only steady thing. Greetings, Tagalon. The shadow spoke. The situation has evolved. I am now taking point on this endeavor. I'd heard of this man, of course, and if he were here, and furthermore was not lying, things were dire indeed. Evolved how? And who involved you? I could practically feel a slight grin split his face. Mischief and defiance. A grin I knew all too well. Nywee got played badly, very badly, and thus is no longer fit to manage the situation. I was charged with this duty by decree of the Hand. The shadow paused, seeming to sense my wariness. Starwalker is currently recovering from suffering revocation. The word resounded with a thunderous echo, or seemed to by the very weight of their meaning. Revocation? For what? Refusing to attack a divine that was interfering in his patron's affairs. Who? Her Majesty. The words hung there for a long moment as I processed. He lives though? Yes, yes, he lives. Praetors are rather robust creatures after all. He's being tended by one most qualified for the task, if he wishes to return to the fight afterwards, is another matter altogether. Not a concern for now then, if you are now running things, what's the plan? I didn't want to consider that this may have broken the Praetor, mostly because I doubted that was even a possibility. We spent the next few hours conversing and sharing the information we both had and rearranging our plans as was needed. I was informed about the other group of interest, aside from Han and his unit. They were based in Solaris and were looking at a war with another local lord. However, if not for the unusual amount of hardware this deep lock had apparently ordered for the conflict, it appeared to be just like any number of similar scenarios that play out across the realms in non-sovereign territories with regularity. And even that was easily explained away by Deep Lock simply have saved for some time for this acquisition, as they were a long time feature of that part of Solaris, and presumably would have the coffers to afford such an expensive properly planned for. All except for 
the disappearance of the boy, Cathian. That is what showed there were other interests in play, and powerful ones at that. Ones that should not have any interest in such a minor, local dispute. By simple logic, his extraction would have required a very high-end agent to pull off, in the manner that it was. No traces left behind by the assailant, and no clues as to exactly how or when it had happened. Farmhold was advanced for the way it liberally employed various Chris tech and other security measures, and had quite the assortment of other tech and magics to make sure those measures were surprisingly effective. Layered as they were, with such a varied yet strangely complementary array of both normal tech and advanced magic from multiple cultures, the walls and city of Farmhold were as protected as well or better than some of the capitals of other council sitting nations. Short of the gods, some Grand Analar, or the equivalent, the place should have been nigh impregnable, at least for such an extraction to be done the way it apparently had been. I idly wondered if even Han and his crew could have pulled it off. We need to find the boy. The shadow continued, perhaps picking up on my thoughts. Perhaps your sergeant could... No, I looked at him. He needs to stay with his factory system. We cannot allow that to be left unsecured. There is an unknown provocateur trying their best to pull them away just long enough for it to be recaptured. My guess is the Empire wanting it back for themselves. The eyes blinked for the first time in our meeting. Very well. What then is your suggestion? I turned to smile. I know a team that can take care of this. The Brothers Caliber. They also happen to owe me a favor. The eyes were still steady but I could almost see the line of a smile in the dark folds of that shadow. That grin again. I foresaw trouble working with this man, for he was likely to embolden bad habits that I really shouldn't indulge in. Very well, they will do. Make the arrangements. I will see about freeing up your sergeant. We will have need of him and his team. And I am afraid it will be sooner than either of us is hoping. By the nine and four, welcome to the library. I am the recorder and in this entry, we will explore in brief a trio of mercenaries known across the realms simply as the Brothers Caliber. As regular visitors and perceptive patrons are well aware of, this will be just an introduction to these cell swords and the impact they've had on the greater realms. To begin with, the Brothers Caliber first appear in the very early records of the ancient empire and have a dark reputation for leaving vast swaths of destruction in their wake among the peoples there. Entire clans and tribes have ceased to exist in the aftermath of having hired the Brothers Caliber. The records from the Empire are limited, but it is clear from them that the Brothers Calibers are immortal, or at the very least, ageless. For several ages, they were the tool of those that could afford their fees, which are recorded as being only slightly less than the cost of total annihilation. There is speculation that they were divine creations of the Scriptorum itself, 
meant to smite the weak and reward the rich, strong, and cunning with their aid. With their action in the war with the realms that came later, this seems to be somewhat confirmed. During those battles with the Scriptorum, the Brothers Caliber were seen leading many of the few decisive assaults that led to significant losses by the realms. Many people look back at this brief interstellar war and recognize that while both sides were more or less just flailing at each other, neither side was really sure of how best to conduct conflict that spawned on so many fronts. Only in specific situations, such as when the Brothers Caliber were involved, did any see dramatic results, and this further attests to their potency in the field of combat. Fast forwarding to more recent times and their introductions to the Hunters and the Realms as a whole, it was said they were one of the principal forces serving the Scriptorum during the conflict that ensued, but apparently they were either too valuable or difficult to kill at the end of the war as they appear with regularity in the age that followed. The brothers are comprised of two dragwa, Trig, a Featherfoot, and Ham, a Sky Dancer. It should be noted that this is a common trend for dragwa that venture forth from the Isle of Mist, one of each major type, as well as a Manari named Pen. They are never without at least two firearms each, although the types vary with every account, along with their clothing and other gear. They seem to prefer meetings and negotiations to take place either in the wilds or in the privacy of a home or the like. It is known that they will not meet anywhere that falls under the direct control of either the hunters or the various guilds that manage the various underworld trades such as assassins, thieves, and the like. Penn seems to be the negotiator and dealmaker for the three, and is said to be possessed of a voice that could charm a dragon. He also seems to be the most subtle of the three, and likely the plan maker for the group. Trig appears to favor heavy and large weapons shotguns, cannons, anything that makes a lot of noise and destruction, and also serves as the trio's explosive expert, able to create many varied forms of explosives. Ham, on the other hand, favors handguns and in large numbers, having been recorded as using more than a dozen different weapons in a single firefight on multiple occasions. The theory of magically summoned weapons is all but accepted as fact. This is despite the fact that the brothers have been in several combats where anti-magical fields and other countermeasures were employed and were not slowed in any way, as well as the fact that the weapons themselves, or some of them at least, have been recovered after these battles. How exactly it is the Brothers Caliber managed to prove so potent and dangerous to the realms and many of her heroes, rumored to include at least one diamond-ranked hunter being killed by them in the final desperate battles of the war, and still not managed to either be slain or otherwise removed from the realms after the war's conclusion, is a matter hotly debated by those that are aware of them. No enlightenment from the gods or others that might know the reason is seemingly forthcoming, but it seems that they were given a chance to live so long as they conducted themselves as proper citizens of the realms. While they have been seen in the realms on an active but wide scale, performing missions for patrons unknown since the end of the Scriptorum conflict, Persistent rumors state that they have taken up long-term residence in Polaron's Old City. Reports from both local authorities, as well as hunters working in Old Polaron, make mention of individuals matching the brothers on multiple occasions, but no confirmation officially. 
If the rumors and reports are true, then the motive behind their move to the old city is unclear. However, as with most, if not all, of the sightings in the post-war era, the brothers seem to have switched from being sledgehammers to scalpels of incredible accuracy. With events often starting and finishing before the sound of a single gunshot or volley dies out. This further strengthens the idea of some sort of deal between the brothers and the powers that be. This switch in MO is what has led to more sightings being reported and a softening of their reputation for wanton destruction. They are not members of the hunter and in fact refuse to join. Most hunters consider a job that might involve running into the brothers to be no less than ruby level work. Another testament to the fearsome reputation they have garnered, even as restrained as they have been in the recent past. They are without the need for money, as the work they do supplies it in plenty, and as such, seem to pick jobs and clients according to some sort of self-constructed and rationed model, often charging far less than any charitable man would, if charging at all for their work in Polaron. For those outside the old city, the price is steep indeed. It should also be noted that the brothers, since the war, have not been recorded as being involved with issues beyond the local or regional scale of import. Gang and pirate bosses that are war with each other, lords of wild realm kingdoms that need such forces curtailed, mercantile groups needing the recovery of stolen wares, all reach out in efforts to bring the brother's caliber to their side, and whose coin easily subsidizes any charity work they may do in Polaron. What motivates them, and how they have managed to endure the ages as they have, are all mysteries that perhaps one day we'll see their answers revealed. But for now, this is where we will end our brief introductory look at the brothers Caliber. I, as always, am the recorder, and I hope you have been enjoying our exploration of the realms as we near the end of Series 2 of Intro to the Realms. I thank you for your time, support, and your interest. Thank you. Until you next make your way back to the library for our next entry, on the nine and four, be well, take care of yourselves and each other. I looked at the man sitting before me in his white suit and waited for his reply to my request for the brother's service. Well, I wasn't in the mood to wait. What's the nature of the job? He eyed me very carefully. Asset location and recovery. A man was kidnapped a few months ago. His eyes softened, but didn't lose their focus in the least. You are sure he lives? I wouldn't waste your time otherwise. The man pulled a small book from his inner pocket, lifted a pen from a hollow in the spine, and prepared to write. This will settle your debt in full, you understand. Of, of course. Alright. Name of the target? Captain, Lord of Farmhold. The man paused pen hovering perfectly still for a moment before he closed the book and stowed it away with the pen looking up at me with a hard look his he simply stated the brothers caliber are on it no fees charged or favors spent now go and know this task will be handled with precision and alacrity you 
will be contacted when they have completed their work. As I left, I felt the anger of the tragedy of avarice flare white and hot for just a moment before being dampened by the closing door behind me. Interesting. What was his interest in the boy? If you'd like to contribute to the further exploration and explanation of the realms, please consider leaving a comment, a like, and sharing the video around. I read all the comments and make efforts to reply to each. Thank you for helping to grow the channel and know I look forward to each and every one of your comments. Other methods of support can be found in the channel's description. Thank you for watching.